What's going on everybody? My name is Aiden and welcome back to another video. Ladies and gentlemen, today we are going to be discussing the Chicago Bulls defense and whether or not it's actually bad, good, or even worse than some people predicted. And I'm going to give my own opinions on this. There's some tweets I want to read out. There's some stats that I want to read out as well. And overall, it's an interesting debate, I would say, considering the fact last season we were considered a top 5 to top 10 defensive team. And I think if you ask the majority of Bulls fans, do you think the Bulls are a solid defensive team? Most of them will probably say, when we're playing at our best, we probably are one of the better defenders, best defensive teams in the league. But what do the stats say? That's quite interesting. And we're going to really take a deeper dive into this in this video. Now, before we get any further, if you liked the video, you want to see more from me, drop a like, drop a follow, and or subscribe if you are new. And let me know in the comments below your thoughts about the Bulls and whether or not you believe they are a solid defensive team. Now, how does this topic come about? Well, I was personally just looking through social media, just trying to, you know, catch up on the news, maybe look at what other people are saying. And I found a couple of tweets from a guy named Kevin Anderson. I don't know if you guys know him or not. Personally, since I'm from Australia, there's a whole lot of people in America that probably do things about Bulls. Uh, related content and bulls related stats that I have no idea about but basically this individual did some research and some I guess you know looking at some analytics based on the bulls and their struggles against teams with high three-point shooting I guess percentages versus teams with low point uh, three-point shooting percentages and here's the tweet that kind of really set the gear on to make this video so essentially, Kevin Anderson said, versus the top 10 NBA teams based on three-point attempts and three-point makes, the Bulls have a 10 and 17 record, which is 37%. Versus the bottom team, bottom nine teams, in terms of three-point attempts and three-point makes, um, they are 10 and 11, which is a record of around 47.6%. Basically suggesting that against the top shooting volume teams in the NBA, at least three-point shooting, the Bulls are very, very poor against those teams defensively. Whereas if you're versing the lower, lower caliber three-point shooting teams, we're around average, I guess you could say, being around a 50% ratio, very, very close to it. And that was very interesting to me because, look, I know we've had our struggles recently guarding the three-point line. Teams like Brooklyn and the Wizards and the Rockets all come to mind. Boston comes to mind. And I'm not sure if all those guys, are, uh, all those teams are lethal three-point shooting teams and whatnot, but I definitely can see first-hand experience watching this team day in and day out that we've definitely had our recent struggles guarding the three-point line. But in this category, it pretty much considers us as one of the worst teams guarding the three-point line. And I just, I was stunned. Now, keep in mind, in this specific, I guess, you know, tweet and this specific analytic I'm mentioning here, it doesn't mention the teams in the middle. And in the middle, the record must be positive because we're not that far away from being negative. This only really tracks around half of our games, maybe 48 games, I think it is technically, out of the 82 that we play. And we haven't played all of them, to be fair. But that's a very big margin that we are missing out on that the Bulls might have good defensive ratings on. So I couldn't believe it. I was actually stunned by reading that stat because, look, I can see the Bulls struggle because I watch the Bulls game in and game out. Every, pretty much every single game, I'm watching the Chicago Bulls play. But I don't watch every other single team play all of their games. I can't physically watch 82 of every single team's games. It's impossible for me. Uh, maybe some people do it. Congratulations. But for me, I just can't do that. So, you know, you see the Bulls struggle, but you also see the, the statistics that show the Bulls might not be struggling as badly as we think compared to how other teams defend the three-point line and stuff of that nature. So I went to the NBA, I guess, app or the NBA website to try and look at statistics, and I found something very interesting. In terms of defensive rating... The Chicago Bulls are one of the lowest teams, are one of the highest teams, I should say, in the league. And higher usually means worse. For example, the Detroit Pistons have the highest defensive rating, um, but that's considered the worst defensive team, if you know what I mean. And the Bulls are considered 20th in that category. So that's pretty low. That's, that's quite low for a team that I thought we had. And now we have to dissect why it's so low. Why is the Bulls' defensive rating... As bad as it is, I guess you could say. And it's difficult to really give one specific answer, but it's clear as day, especially post-All-Star break, our defense has shot all the way down. And I guess there has to be some reasons for that. So let's get started. 
Before I say anything, I'm not going to mention Lonzo Ball's injury as a reason why. Because last season for the Bulls, yes, we struggled defensively for some games, but for the most part, we were a top 10 defensive team last season. And that is, out of all the things you could talk about, something to be proud of. And that happened without Lonzo Ball. So we've taken a massive step away from that situation without Lonzo Ball to this situation without Lonzo Ball. I completely understand we would be a better defensive team with Lonzo Ball in the lineup, but we were a good defensive team regardless without him there. So I'm not going to really mention that as an excuse. But one player I am going to mention as a potential excuse is the Patrick Woo- uh, the Patrick Beverly sorry, situation that is in the team. You know, Patrick Williams last season, we signed him on for the later part of the season. We became a better defensive team, a bit of a vocal leader there as well. And the Bulls not having that this season, we expected Javon Carter to kind of fill in that role. That's what a lot of people were comparing it to. I don't think Javon Carter's really stepped up in the way that a Patrick Beverly might have done, at least on the defensive end. You know, the vocality of it all. I don't think he's done what many of us expected him to do in that role. And I think that's a big reason why our defensive, I guess, ranking has gone, you know, really, really bad really, really quickly. So that's the first thing I want to mention, because 14-9 and nine post All-Star break, whatever, I mean, it's not that big of an accomplishment, is it? But still, it's something. And the defensive rating there was probably fairly decent. It is something to talk about compared to where we are now, 20th in the league in defense, at least from that rating, is insane to me. So that's the first thing. I think the second thing we need to talk about is injuries, unfortunately. You know, the Javante Green injury last season, that obviously led to him being letting go, let go this season, is probably a big factor in this. Um, The fact that, you know, Torrey Craig was out for two months, Patrick Williams is out for the rest of the season, Uh, Caruso's had his ups and downs this season in terms of defense and whatnot and and injuries and stuff of that nature. All those things play a factor. I think team defense has been the biggest problem in recent times, you know, when, when you're letting as many threes go by you as you possibly can, you can't put that on one person. For example, the game against... The last game we played, I targeted and singled out Kobe White for not guarding the corners correctly. But that's happened to DeMar DeRozan this season. Anytime someone goes underneath a screen, they seem to make a three and knock it down. There's no real energy to really get to the three-point line and, and really you know stop that from happening. I think that's frustrating as well. I obviously think key things with Nikola Vucevic as well, being in the center position, we have to hide so many of his weaknesses that it does allow the three-point shot to become open because Vucevic is not the best defender and we should not be leaving him alone on the defensive end. That causes dramatic problems. I think the one through five switching causes dramatic problems for the Bulls on the defensive end as well because you're putting Vucevic onto guards and guards will just shoot over him like it's no tomorrow. They can get anything they want with Vucevic on the, in, in guarding them. And that's a harsh reality of things as well. But I think the biggest reason for me, and I think this is a reason that makes the most sense, is that we knew what type of defensive team we were last season. We had Derek Jones, Javante Green. We had very athletic um, players there on the defensive end that we kind of knew what we were. I guess the biggest weakness was the physicality, but athletically, we could get to the three-point line, we could get the steals and deflections, we could get downhill, and we could do all those things that, that was our, our identity on the defensive end. I think the Bulls this season kind of went away from the athletic side of things. We still have athletic players like Io, and again, you still got Javante Green technically here. There is still athletic players, even Drummond I would consider a fairly athletic player for his size, that could still get steals and deflections and blocks and, you know, go out and transition and stuff of that nature. But we kind of turned away from the athleticism side of things in terms of the defensive end. And we we went more physical. We went more the Tory Craig approach and stuff of that nature. And, you know, I think it kind of brought an imbalance to the defensive end that is presentable, in my opinion. Because some games we are physical, some games we're athletic, but you don't often see the best of both worlds in terms of how athletic this Bulls team can be versus how physical this Bulls team can be. And we're still massively undersized, but I don't necessarily think that translates to the three-point line. Uh, But that's a big issue as well. So do you agree with me? Do you believe that since we started to go the more physical approach, there's an imbalance on the defensive end? Because that's the only thing I can come up with, in all honesty. You know, a year ago, we knew this team was not going to be physical, we'll foul a lot, but we'll get steals. 
I'm not so sure about this team at the moment. At least the stats kind of reflect that. But thank you for watching. Drop a like and a follow. And or subscribe if you are new. See you in the next one. Stay safe, stay healthy, and stay tuned for more. Take care. And peace.